Well, this is what we're making today. It's a top bar hive, and uh, this is it without the roof on it. And the reason I started out showing it to you like this is I got the plans. Um, I'll put a link to them in the description. Uh, there's uh, from a, a bee journal, and they uh, so it was based off of that, but then I changed it up quite a bit um, because. Uh, I wanted a peaked roof on mine. They made it with a flat roof on it. In other words, it would be pretty much just like this and then just put a flat roof across the top of it. Um, and then their window was only half the size and there were several other things that um, I changed up. But if you want plans for it, I don't have plans for this one, you can go and base them off of that one um, just like I did. But let me kind of show you some of the features here. There's a view window right here. So you can look in there and see what the bees are doing little lock there the uh, the opening is right here and they said that uh, side entrances seem to be preferred by bees and so you know I've I've never had raised bees before so uh, I kind of taken their recommendations and you know I'll go from there but so here's the opening right here and then on the ends I've got another opening right here and right now it's got a screen put in across it it's for ventilation um, and then I can unscrew this and I can put a sugar feeder in there like you would on um, other types of hives the other end is pretty much exactly the same it's got that same opening right there this would be the back end of it and then the inside of the hive let me show you because we make the we make all the the uh, bars that go across the top, and these just lay in there, just across like that. There were some pretty good um, ideas with this hive. The people that designed it had some had some really good ideas. Like the top, the the front piece comes up high, and so you butt up against it. But then the one in the back. actually this is just a spacer the one in the back um, is the same height as the rail so if your bars aren't exactly the right size you can always just bring them back over the top just a little bit and still have everything fit so um, there's some little differences in the design uh, that i think work pretty well the uh changes that I made was I added this rail around the top because I wanted a lid that would lift up um, the way they did it would just be with a a flat roof that you would just lift off um, when you're getting ready to um, work with your bees okay let's get into the shop and we'll get started I'm going to get these uh, the end walls laid out and this is a 30 60 90 triangle because this angle is 60 degrees and this just makes it easier to lay out. Mine's got a nick out of the corner so I have to run it up a little farther. Okay now off the bottom down here you want to measure over seven inches and that's one of my end walls. Now, the height of this, um, the way they designed it, um, the front one is taller than the back wall or the follower in there, and I'm going to do that same thing. So, the height on, one, on the front one is 10 and a half inches high, and the height on the other, the follower and the back wall is 9 and 3 quarters from here to here. I've got my miter gauge set to 60 degrees. And I'm going to get these edges trimmed off. That's got the three of them cut out. And they're just pretty much identical. Now the heights here are a little different, but that doesn't matter because um, I made them too tall. It's the bottom that all has to be the same, and then I'll cut them to the correct uh, heights. 
getting ready to cut the bevel on our sides and uh, I've got my blade set to 30 degrees. I'm just going to trim off one side. All right, the blade is set to 90 degrees and I'm going to take our bevel and I'm going to put it like this. So the bevel is up against our fence and I'm going to cut them off to 11 and a quarter. Now I've got to cut the end wall and the follower or the divider that goes in there. And I want to be sure I key off of that narrow edge because that's what matters. And so I'm cutting these to nine and three quarters. And the front wall gets cut to ten and a half or three quarters of an inch taller. All right, I'm getting ready to uh, cut the hole out for the glass and this piece is six inches by 34. That's a piece I had, so uh, that's what I'm using. And when I line it up on the end and measure, I get 11 inches left over, so I want five and a half inches of wood on each end. I'm going to drop it down an inch and a quarter from the top. All right, so I drilled, I mean, I marked out the size of the glass, and then I came in with three-eighths off the edge of that glass, and now I'm going to drill out the uh, corners with a three-eighths uh, Forstner bit. Okay, so I'm going to use my uh, jigsaw here to uh, cut the size out, and I put a piece of wood to kind of help me get it straight, um, and just clamped it down. Okay, so this board's not helping me, so I'm just cutting it by hand. Well, I almost forgot to film this. <laughs> I've got a, a, a rabbit bit in here that cuts a 3 8 groove, and I'm cutting it out right now to about a quarter inch. I've got to go half inch, and I'm just doing a half at a time. Alright, let's drop our glass in there and see how it fits. Yeah. There we go. I'm laying out for the opening on the, let's see, on the left side. And I'm going to come in three inches, and then the opening is going to be three inches. So mark three and six. And then I come up seven eighths. So what that does, you cut it 7 eighths on the inside, and then the outside is only 3 eighths of an inch. Alright, so this is the front piece, and I want to um, put a door in the front of this. And this one is mainly to um, so I can put a sugar feeder in there. And so it's, I'm just going to make it, there's a, in the plans it talks about... Um, let me see. And you know, I don't know anything about beekeeping, so a Daydant entrance feeder, D-A-D-A-N-T. Uh, a plastic one, is. it says to make, if you're using a plastic one, make this 3 and 3 sixteenths. If you're using a metal and wood combination, make this, make this opening uh, 4 and 9 sixteenths. So, 
I'm going to make it three inches because uh, I'm going to make my own feeder and I'll just make it so that it fits in here. Now the opening here uh, is supposed to be three eighths. Okay, now I'm going to uh, just put another one of these openings in the backboard. This is our bottom board, and I've squared off the end, and I'm going to measure it. Oh, it's 50 inches, and I'll get that trimmed. Time to start putting the sides on, and I'm using these Spax construction screws. Um, the... Um, Let's say you don't have to pre-drill them, and they're really pretty amazing. Unfortunately, it says interior use on here, but they are uh, chrome zinc plated. So I'm going to go ahead and use them and just see what happens. It's probably a mistake, but hopefully um, it'll work out fine. But you'll see that uh, you, you can put them in close to the edge, and it doesn't split. So or that's the idea. I have to, I've had good luck with them so far. Okay, so I got, this is the back, and this, and I should have the front here, so I'm going to have to redo that. Alright, so now I'm going to hopefully get it put together correctly. Now we're going to get the front put in, and you can see I've got it up on some, uh, uh, three quarter inch stock because this is three quarters of an inch taller the front is than the back so I'm going to get that screwed on all right so I'm getting our bottom ready to install and this is 45 inches long this is 50 inches long, so that's five inches different, so that's going to be two and a half inches off of each end. All right, and then this is right at eight inches. No, right at nine inches. So that's gonna be four and a half in on each side. No, nine inches. <laughs> nine inches, and this is 11 and a quarter. So that's one, two, and a quarter. So we're going to come in one and an eighth. Now I put the same marks on the top here so that I'll know where to screw. Now the plans stop here and they just put a flat top on it. Uh, but I actually want a uh, gabled or a, you know, an arched uh, roof on this one. So uh, I'm going to change up the plans a little bit. I also, when you put the, um, when you put the top bars in, which I haven't finished these, but they're supposed to, between the end and the edge of the wall, there's supposed to be a 3 8 inch gap. And um, I would like to put a rail up here that's going to hold these ends to make sure that gap is maintained. So I'm going to run boards around the top. So that's an ad addition to uh, the plans.
All right, I got a dado head uh, in here, and I'm going to, uh, this is where I was setting it. I'm going to run a dado down the length of these to uh, put that spline in. All right, I got all my top bars laid out here, and I had to uh, put them all in here to make sure they'd fit, because some of them I had, I had to kind of work on just a little bit to get them to go down in there. As you can see, I burned a few of them. Well, I burned all of them uh, going along there. I think I was uh, burning them into as much as I was cutting them into. But anyway, uh, I've put a new blade on there, so I think it'll be working a lot better. All right, I just got to get these all uh, glued in there. Okay, to uh, mark each one of these, uh, I want to put a, a board down here so that I can make a line back here on the back side. Can you see that? Yeah. So I can make a mark back here on the back side to line these up each time so I don't have to measure every one. And my board's not long enough here to do that. So I've just, I got a little double stick tape here. Cut it off. Now this is one that I've already cut to length, so I'm going to get it to be exactly right there, and then mark the back end. And now I'm ready to get them all cut. This is a jig that I got from Grizzly um, several years back, and uh, I know very few of y'all are going to have these, and so um, this is what I'm using to uh, cut this spline back. Now if I didn't have this, there's several ways to make these um, bars without having to do this. One, I could have just routed um, a slot down through here with a router table and then dropped this in. Um, I could have done it exactly like this and used my fence of my table saw to run it in like this and just set a, a stop to stop it um, at the right place. But anyway, so this is what um, I'm going to use, and I'm going to start running these through. All right, here's the... Uh I've been calling it a follower board. I think it's a divider, so you can make it make your hive bigger and smaller. And so um, I'm gonna get it, get the top put on it. All right, that's got all of the bars made. I made six extra ones, and um, the way they designed this, the the back. Um, wall is even with the side rails that way if you've got a um, if your uh, bars don't exactly fit uh, they can hang over that back um, these fit really pretty well um, but I can take this I made this little spacer to drop in there just to uh, finish uh, taking up that last little space there now the plans call for uh, this strip in here to be red oak um, I've seen people use a lot of different um, woods in here. Some people just cut a groove down the middle and put beeswax in there. Um, but this is white oak. Um, it's what I had available. So that's what I used. All right, I got the window in here and I've cut some, uh, just a 45 degree angle on the table saw, just cut a little strip of wood. And I'm gonna drop this down in here and then just put some little tacks in it. I'll do one top and bottom and on the sides.
All right, so now I'm just gonna frame this out and I'm gonna leave probably about a 3 8 inch uh, overlap here so that when the door comes, it'll overlap here to try to keep the light out. All right, so here's the door, and I cut it an eighth of an inch short on the sides, and about three sixteenths short top and bottom, because when it swings, you gotta have a little clearance for that back edge right there. These are the hinges I'm using. I had to, it was the same on both ends, I had to cut them off a little bit. I've taken a piece of, uh, this is what we trimmed off when we were cutting the angle on the bottom of these boards right here. I just took a little piece of it and I'm going to turn it into a handle to put right here like that. Okay, I'm making the, uh, the pieces that go on the ends that hold the screens in place. Now, these are six inches long from end to end. They're an inch and a half tall. The hole in the middle is a three and a half, and it's three eighths tall. And then I just did a circle on each end that's an inch and a half uh, in diameter, and then put a little spot right in the middle to do a screw hole. Okay, we've got to make the little screens that go here, that go in behind this piece. So I've got a piece of uh, hardware cloth. This is an eighth inch. And I'm going to cut these pieces. The hole is three inches, so I'm going to make it uh, three and a half long. Okay, so here are my two pieces. Oh yeah, I need to trim that off just a little bit. There we go. Now I'm gonna come up half inch. And then just close it up in the vise. And push it down. Gives me a nice bend. I get one of these screens put in place. And these are some stainless steel screws. This one is actually in the back, and I probably won't ever take it off again. But the the one in the front. If I'm going to use a sugar feeder, that's where I'll feed them, so I'll be taking it off quite a bit. So I kind of wanted something that I could take on and off multiple times and have it still work. Now, this is a piece of scrap uh, from when I cut the side walls. So it, this is already at 60 degrees, and I need a piece that's one inch wide. So I'm putting my bevel up against like that. And I need a piece that's about, oh, I can't, it's uh, four and three quarters long. So I'm just going to make sure I have plenty of 
length. Alright, that should give me enough and now I'll just uh, trim this off on the miter saw. Alright, i got to mark out for the holes. So they're going to be half inch. half inch and then I got to come in half of my width which is three eighths okay so it's got a bevel on it so I took a piece of the scrap and I'm just going to hold those together that'll give me a way to hold this flat while I drill through it You know, I could have um, gotten a square piece, drilled those holes, would have been easier, and then cut my bevel, but I already had this piece of scrap, so either way. Okay, so this is the end of my roof, and it's uh, 23 and a half inches long. It's, I came up an inch and a half, and then I just drew a, um, a peak to the middle, and this is a nine inch board, so I don't know exactly what this angle is right here. Um, yeah, I don't know what that angle is. So I am now going to get these. Okay, so this is a, actually a two by six uh, that I cut. This side right here is an inch and a quarter, or inch and a half. And then I be able to, I wanted a nice wide piece here so I'd be able to attach my metal down um, to a nice wide board. So let me get these put together. All right, I got a used piece of tin uh, that I'm gonna use as a roof. I just gotta get it screwed on here. I'm gonna add a hook up underneath the lid um, to hold it down. I don't want the wind to be able to pick it up and uh, you know flip it over or flip it open. This is a hook that I actually made. I didn't, of course, make the screw eye, but um, I made, if you're interested in that, I've got a video out there. I think it's called uh, Making Wire Hardware. All right, I had to make a little bit shorter one. That one was too long. Okay, so here's the hive completed. Uh, I'm really happy with the way it turned out, except for the roof. You know, it's kind of ugly, and um, I don't, anyway, if I had it to do over, I would probably just put a flat piece of metal on it. Um, and I plan to build some more of these, and that's probably what I'll do um, when I do those. But, you know, I left, left it overhanging quite a bit because I didn't want to paint it, and that way uh, it keeps the rain off of it. And, and yellow pine, it'll last almost forever if you can keep it, Almost, you know, pretty much dry. It can get rain on it and then it, it dries out and stuff. So, anyway, I'm going to get this thing placed. Hopefully, I'll get a chance to uh, film it when I place it and put the bees in it and all that. Um, we'll just have to see. Um, the guy, I've, uh, this guy's going to give me a swarm of bees when he gets it. And so, when that happens, I don't know if I'll have time to get it filmed or not, but I'll try to do that. Anyway, appreciate you watching. Hope you enjoyed the video.